What's up everybody, Camro here, and welcome to part 70 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be looking at weather. First, we're going to look at all the different weathers that we can use in our game, and then after that, we're going to set some of the weathers on our maps using the map's metadata. Then after that, we're going to look at how we can change the weather on our maps by using events. And then finally, we're going to look into some of the weather animations in our game and updating one of them, because one in particular I hate and I would like to update. So, with all that said, let's get into it. So what we've got here is our game that we've been working on. As you can see, I've got some of the new tiles and everything. So I'm just going to keep it rocking on this map. And uh, I want to open up the scripts here in the script editor. And let's just scroll on down to pfield underscore weather. Right here at the very top, you'll see that we have eight possible weathers. Weather zero is none. That's just the default when you go into a map. But then we have rain and storm and snow. These are the ones that are made for RPG Maker XP. And then additionally, we have some bonus weathers here, such as Blizzard, Sandstorm, Heavy Rain, and Sun, or Sunny. And you can scroll down through the script, and this is where you would go if you wanted to add more weathers, but some of these are really complex, and I don't think we're ready to tackle making new weathers just yet. That would be like a whole tutorial on its own, this is some crazy stuff. What we're going to do is we're just going to focus on these weathers right here. We can mess around with these as well too, but... Let's focus on Blizzard, Sandstorm, Heavy Rain, and Sun. And then, you know, we'll also use like None and Rain. But this is where you can see which weathers that we have. So, let's run our game now. And let's set the weather on our map by using the map's metadata. Here we go. I'm going to load right on in. Yeah, check it out. I got a little chancy here. Now, I'm going to press F9 to open the debug menu. And then we want to go down to Information Editors. And then Edit Metadata. What we can do is we can select our map here, and you'll notice if we scroll on down, we can select weather. Let's choose a weather effect. So we could choose none, which is just weather equals nil here, but then we can choose those list, um, those weathers from our list that we saw in the script editor earlier. So rain, storm, snow, blizzard, sandstorm, sunny. Let's make it heavy rain. And we want it to be 100%. So the way that the probability field works is that is the uh, the frequency that the weather will occur on our map when we transition to the map. So now that our weather probability for heavy rain is set to 100%, if we leave and come back 100% of the time, now it'll be heavy rain. Wow, look at that. And the heavy rain will actually impact our Pokemon battle as well. Let me turn on my speed up switch. Look at that. It's raining heavily in this battle. Uh-huh, pretty, uh, pretty fancy stuff, huh? Let's, uh, let's run from this battle. Get me out of here, Blissey. So, what if we go into our map's metadata once again and change it to a different weather? Such as, um, wait, I don't, I don't want to change that. Oh no, this is an outdoor map. Okay, here we go. Let's change our weathers once again. We could see what Sunny looks like. Ooh, and let's make that 100%. Uh-huh, look at that. What we got here now is it hasn't changed because we haven't left and refreshed the map. But now, if we refresh the map, ah, we've got this harsh sun. Now let's get into a battle. All right, Blissey. Oh, it's so bright, it hurts my eyes. We need to get out of this battle quick. <laughs> so, this is how you can edit uh, weather in a map by using the map's metadata. Also, why can't I turn on my speed up switch? There we go. Let me get the hell out of here. Cool. So, it's important to note that it'll only change on map transition. One thing that's also important to note is when you are changing to heavy sunlight like this, it's recommended that you, let me close the game, it's recommended that you have enable shading set to false in the settings. Let me uh, pull that up. Because if you set it to true and then you play the game at nighttime, it'll be nighttime and um, the sunlight will still be glowing brightly during the nighttime, so it just looks really weird. So I have mine set to false and I record at nighttime, so then the sunlight looks good. All right, so we figured out how we can set um, our weathers on a map by using the metadata, and that controls what the weather is like when we step onto the map. But how could we set the weather on our map using an event? Well, it's actually really simple, and it's also already been defined in Pokemon Essentials, and it's already been defined with a guy who's here already on Route 7. It's this guy. He's the weather man. So the way that you can set the weather using an event is by calling a script command. And the script command looks like this. Dollar sign game underscore screen dot weather. And then in parentheses, the type of weather that you want to set. 
which is PB field weather and then the colons heavy rain. You could replace this with sandstorm. You could replace this with blizzard. And then this is the intensity of the weather. So we'll go with 9.0. And then this is the number of frames it takes to transition in weather. The reason that we set intensity here is because this is how the default set weather effects command works in RPG Maker. But you'll notice this doesn't include all of the weathers that we want. And because it doesn't include all of our custom weathers, that's why we use this different command here. If you wanted to just use one of the weathers that's here in RPG Maker, the set weather effects command would suffice. But we want sandstorms, god dang it, so this isn't going to suffice. So let's just go over here to his some of his commands and let's copy one of them, shall we? And then let's make a new event here and let's make it so that way on player touch when you step on this tile it will let's just paste that in set the weather to sandstorm but only when you step on this tile oh wait did i not save it <laughs> there we go let's save it so there we, now we've got our event here so on player touch if we step on this it'll become a sandstorm now let's actually copy this and paste a couple of these so when we step on this it'll become a sandstorm now let's actually copy these and paste these once more and then let's edit this so that way instead of it becoming a sandstorm, it becomes a blizzard. And then really quick, just because I'm paranoid, I'm going to go back into my game folder and run extend text. There we go. That that extends these text, uh, these text boxes. I like to see everything on one line just because I'm OCD and paranoid about this stuff. But here we go. Now if we step on this tile, it'll become blizzard. And then we can copy and paste these. So now what we have here is almost a threshold where even though we're on the same route, if we walk over to the right and then step on this tile, bloop, and then go over this way, it'll become a blizzard. And then if we walk over this way and then step on this tile, bloop, it will become a sandstorm. Now let's run our game. This is uh, this is gonna look very interesting because we're gonna go from, I think, heavy sun into blizzard into sandstorm. But hey, you know, this is the tutorial where we mess around with weather, so it only makes sense. So check this out. We haven't, uh, we haven't refreshed the map yet, so what we need to do is leave and come back. Then it will load the metadata uh, weather setting. If we save and then close our game and then run it again, then it will be heavy rain when we, I mean, not heavy rain. It will be sunny when we uh, boot it up. I'm saying uh, a lot. I'm sorry for that. Anyway, I'm going to save and then boot this up again just so I can showcase what I'm talking about. There we go. Now it's sunny. So... If you save while you are affected by a weather effect, if you then close the game and then launch again, that weather effect will persist. So if I save when it's raining, then I close my game and reopen it, it'll be raining when I load in. So let's step on those tiles. Oh, now, now we got ourselves a blizzard. Now we got ourselves a sandstorm. Look at that. That's pretty fantastic, right? So then if we start walking this way, whoa. That's kind of jarring though, right? Like... Ideally, you would make it so it's not, like, so instant, but hey, <laughs> it just transitioned over 20 frames. So that would be how you set the weather. Let's uh, let's go talk to this crazy weather guy. Actually, you know, we, uh, we have the power to edit our game. Let's make the crazy weather guy come to us. There you go. There you go, crazy weather guy. I hope you enjoy your new home standing right there next to me now. Okay. So, it's heavy sun. Let's talk to him. Let's set it to be none. Aha! Uh -huh. Thank you, mister. I do know about weather metadata. Alright, I'm gonna turn on my speed up switch. Ah, uh, oops. Oh my god, I keep hitting none, I'm sorry. Alright, here we go. Let's just set it to rain. Ah, oh. so that's what normal rain looks like. Let's get into a battle with our Blissey now and showcase what the rain looks like. That looks pretty good. That all looks pretty dang good. Let me uh, run from this. So... Blizzard, I believe, is hail in battle, so let's showcase that now. Oh, wow, look at all of that. It's almost like a sandstorm, but with white sand. All right, Blissey, I'm going to fight you now. Oh, let's uh, let's fight Blissey for a turn here. Oh, it's, it is hail. Okay, cool. So, yeah, if you have the weather set to Blizzard, then you'll be affected by hail when you go into the battle. Naturally. Naturally. Okay. Hopefully that's all clear. There is one more weather I want to show you, though, because this is going to segue naturally into the last point of this tutorial. Sandstorm. Uh, the sandstorm visual effects, they look great in uh, Elite Battle System, 
because everything looks great in Elite Battle System. Elite Battle System is just fantastic. However, the Sandstorm visual effects that come with the default Pokemon Essentials look like garbage, and we're gonna go in and change those. So, let's uh, beat up this Blissey real quick. All right, Blissey, GG's. GG, Blissey. What do you know? So, yeah, hopefully you're comfortable messing around with weather now. Let's, uh, let's go into a base version of Pokemon Essentials, which I actually just have running right over here. Haha! -ha! Now look at this. Check this out. This is actually going to prove one of my points very well, also. Um, the save that I'm using is called Pokemon Essentials, which means it's going to be loading my map and party and weather data from the other version of the game I'm working on. So when I load into here, it's going to be sunny as heck because it's it remembers what weather I had when I loaded. And then if I leave and come back, now it's rain because in this game, I set the metadata on this map to be rainy. Isn't that interesting? But... Let's actually showcase what the Sandstorm effects look like in default Pokemon Essentials. I think that they look like garbage in battle. In the in the world over here, they look great. This looks like some great sand. But let's get into a battle. And uh, I'll show you what I mean. Alright, here we go. I'm gonna fight this Bulbasaur. Take a look at this take a look at the sandstorm. Alright, so far so good. Ah my eyes! Did you see that? It was hard to tell which brown square was the sand or not. Okay, we need to fix that because that looks horrifying. What we want to do is we want to go into our game's graphics folder, and then we want to go into animations, and then I believe it's down here in the weather. Let's uh, let's just take a look at this right now in paint. I'm going to edit this in Photoshop now in a little bit, but good gosh. This tile right here is what our sandstorm looks like. Ew, let's change that. I'm going to open up Photoshop now, and we are going to get cracking on this so that way it doesn't look like such an assault on the eyes. The hail looks fine in battle, I think. The rain looks fine. But let's get our Photoshop running over here, and let's fix up that friggin' sand, shall we? Alright, I want to go into the weather folder here. Now, this tile, let's see, it's by 960. Okay, anyway, this sand looks like ass. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to, you know, let's uh, let's make a new layer here over the sand. And let's just make a couple like little like sandy brown pixels. I think we don't need to overthink it too much. I'm gonna select a color here, something like that, you know, something that's not too horrifying to look at. And let's bust out our pencil tool. And I'm just gonna draw a little sand there, a little sand there, you know, maybe a little sand over here. There we go. Now let's go to our original sand and let's just delete that shit. Like, look at that. That's all we need for a sandstorm. We don't need much more, honestly. Just a few pixels here and there, you know? Maybe a smiley face. Yeah, there you go. It's perfect. Perfect for a sandstorm. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna couple, draw a couple more little pixels here. But the thing is, we don't want to draw too many because the sandstorm animation already uses this particular tile and it goes flying by at light speed. So let's just save this. Uh, I'm gonna save this as weather PSD. And then I'm going to save this as a PNG. I'm saving it as the PSD. Actually, no, I'm going to just rename this as Weather Backup. Weather Backup. We don't want to lose all of our original weather stuff. Just in case we want to go back to that puke <laughs> sand square that we had prior. So let's just save this as weather.png. Cool. So now if we boot up our game and run it... The weather animation sheet has been changed to use our new weather. So, let's talk to this man here, and let's set it to be a sandstorm. Ah, oh, yes, it's beautiful. Look at all of the sand. It's getting into my eyes. Terrific. Now, let's get into a battle here. Let's uh, beat up a Bulbasaur. All right. Fingers crossed that the sand is no longer seizure-inducing. Okay, Bulbasaur. Okay, Gyarados. There we go. That looks so much better. Good lord. I, <laughs> it's, I find it hard to believe that the original Sandstorm was such an assault on the eyes, but that's how you would modify the uh, sand animations. If you want to modify the animations more, the animations can actually be accessed within the Move Animation Editor, in Information Editor's Battle Animation Editor. From within here... Oh, it's kind of hard to see with the current screen sailing, <laughs> scaling. Let me uh, fix that real quick. All right, here we are in the battle animation editor. If you go to list of animations and then scroll all the way up in this list, 
around some of the top animations here, there's Common Sunny, Common Rain, Common Sandstorm, Hail, and then Shadow Sky. I've actually never messed around with that, but this is where you could edit the animations for the weathers that show up if you're using the non-elite battle system, just the default um, Pokemon Essentials battle system. This is where you would want to go if you want to edit those weather animations. Here is where you would also go if you want to edit the, sh edit the shiny animation or I think even the mega evolution animation can be edited within here. So yeah, this is where you can find some cool stuff and edit them. Like let's load the sand one and let's just play it. Look at that. That looks such like that looks much better. It's it's much better this way. Anywho, I think that about does it for me. Hopefully now after this, you know how to set the metadata of a map to have weather and you know about the rules where if you save while a weather is active in your game and then, you know, close your game and reopen, it will retain that weather. Uh, metadata weather is only loaded when you enter and exit that map, when you transition to that map. And then hopefully now you're more familiar with how you can set the weather using an event. This guy here is in the root seven of the default um, Pokemon Essentials. And you can mess around with him and you can see all of the stuff here for all the weathers. So you can make it so that way there's auto run events, player touch events. You can make it so that way there's stuff that's only triggered in the story for weathers. Um, but yeah, that about does it for me. Hopefully you learned some interesting stuff this episode. And hopefully you follow me on those social links in the description. And hopefully once more, I'm just a very hopeful guy today. Uh, hopefully you have a good one. Until next time, you guys. Have a good one.